Right, lower league management, what PIs, player instructions, should we put on the players? Or maybe more importantly, which should we not? What's up everyone, how's it going? So it's another How I Manage little episode here and it's about lower league management. Few requests for this one. I love spending time in the lower league, sometimes by accident. I spend too much time down there because we can't get promoted. But this one's about player instructions on tactics that are built. Here we are at Glorious Gateshead in the Banarama National League North. So you've got to build your tactic, right? And whatever shape you go for is entirely up to you. I like to keep it simple, but it doesn't mean I'm absolutely right there. But one thing I do keep simple is player and team instructions the lower down you go a lower league tactic that i released this year was the light cheat and steel 22 i also used it last year we remixed it for this year and it worked really well video just there we did a lot of tests with lots of different lower league teams and it did the business and if you look at it the team instructions down the column there there's not a lot going on is there they're pretty basic in possession there's four in transition same again and out of possession some pretty basic ones as well now also if you look at the players here this is what this video is mostly about so you've got a string of midfielders there and a central midfielder on support is basically a blank canvas meaning that they won't have pis hard coded to them so you can build them the way you want but a word of caution don't bang a load on this is a light chain still 22 tactic and he's got to shoot more often and that's it if you look around the tactic wingers non added there deep line playmaker non added there there's a theme here there's very few added as player instructions to these players. Now, the higher up you go, the better players that come in, that's when you can start getting funky, a bit sexy, asking the players to do more than their actually role asks them to. But when we're down low, we keep it simple for this reason. So we'll pick on a random player from the squad, Dan Ward, sorry mate, I'm sure you're a great player in real life, but for the sake of this video, I need to crucify you. So you can see there his technicals, all single digits, mentals, not great and his physical is not great as well and that's going to affect the way you ask him to play he's going to play the best he can of course he is but if you ask him to do too much he's not going to be the man for the job so if i was to slot dan ward into a central midfield role like that his attributes will come up for me so i can have a good look at him while i'm planning my tactic and you can see there even for the central midfield role nothing really stands out his stamina is okay his work rate's good so he's going to put a graft in he's going to put a shift in but there's no point in me asking him to be a creative source or a goal threat because it's not really going to work. His long shots is six. His finishing is only okay. So for me to go up here and say, take more risks, for example, which I see a lot, more direct passing, shoot more often. I'm asking for trouble and wasted possession because he's not capable. His vision is nine. His technique is eight. His passing's nine. So to ask him to ping the ball more direct into all corners and go for killer balls and then get in this zone here, start shooting, I'm wasting possession. It's not going to end well. So at this level, the way I go about it is it's all about accentuating the positives and just trying to eliminate the negatives as best you can to build the tactic. So from the back, you're going to lose a lot of the ball from your defenders. They're not going to be great on the ball down this level. So to ask them to be more direct or play as ball playing defenders is probably not the way to go. If we look at Tinkler here, his passing is 9, it's okay, his technique's 10, vision 7, first touch 6. So I don't really want him taking too many risks, so that's exactly what I slot in there. This is a pretty much a gimme. Every time I come to a lower league team, the centre backs, both of them, will go to take fewer risks. And when you see what I did there, when I take that off, you can see the option for more direct and it's set at standard. When I knock it on to take fewer risks, it instantly becomes shorter. So he's going to pass the ball shorter. That's going to be a big help in keeping the ball and not giving it away stupidly. So now when he receives the ball, this fella here, Forbes, when he receives the ball in this position here from the keeper, instead of going for a defence splitting pass, He's more likely to do this sort of pass here where he receives it and lays it off to a central midfielder who can just start the move off in a far better manner. Right, if we flow on over to fullbacks now, a lot of people want their team to play like the seat on TV. So you've got your bombing wingbacks supplying all the whips, so that means you can get a bit sexy with the roles in front of them. However, when you're down low, you need to take those attributes in mind. So I've got his attributes highlighted there. So he is my left fullback, Matty Jacob. So you can see he's got decent crossing, that's decent ability there. His decisions are good, passing to average, but his physicals are the one I want to point out. So his acceleration is 9, his pace is 10, and dribbling into that 8. So a very popular one I see is cross from byline. But if you're asking this kid to cross from the byline, those three attributes, acceleration, pace, dribbling, 
They're not really going to help him out because he's not going to get there very often. So you're not going to get a lot of crosses. What I prefer to do, especially with a player like Matty Jacob, who's got decent crossing ability for this level, I still want him to cross. So I will add cross more often, but crucially I'll put cross from deep. So what that means is when he gets to these sort of areas here, he'll ping it. And he's more than capable of getting there. But asking him to get to the byline, to basically act like a winger, it's not in his remit, he's not there for it. But we can still make him pretty effective going forward by doing it that way. That decision to scale the fullback back is amplified by the player in front of him. So I've got Williams here, who's good. The hard-coded player instructions ask him to cross on the byline, cross more often, get further forward, stay wider, aggressive winger. And if you look at his attributes, he's built for it. He's built for it. So why do I ask my fullback to do it as well? He's not capable. Let him do his fullback role, cross now and again when he can. Let the guy in front do the damage. Similar story with your central midfield pairing as well. So if I look at this fella here, this is Owen Bailey. I've got him down as a box to box midfielder. He's got really good mentals to be fair. And his physicals aren't bad as well. He's got natural fitness coming out of his eyeballs, stamina, work rate, proper grafter in central midfield. But you can also see his long shots are poor. His finishing's pretty average as well. So I'm just gonna knock onto him, shoot less often so we don't waste the ball. I'm gonna keep the passing at direct and we'll leave passing Ricks off because he's got decent passing and vision. We're dribbling less because he's got poor dribbling ability as well. So again, all we're doing there is we're taking away the negatives out of his game as best we can without adding unnecessary things that'll just complicate matters. However, next door to him, we have Greg Ollie, who seems to be a better all-round player for an attacking sense. You can see I've added more direct passes, take more risks and shoot more often. Why? Long shots, 10, finishing 11. By all means, shoot more often. Big man, go for it. He's going to be my attacking midfield threat, unlike the other lad. I've also got more direct passes, taking more risks, because he's passing his 11. His vision's 12. He's got decent technique and okay first touch. So he's much more suited to be a creative force. That's where I draw the line, though. I don't need to add any more. If you go to edit, you can see you can add dribble more. You can ask him to move into channels, roam, cross, but we don't need to. It's still pretty simple, but we're accentuating his positives. And that's what I've done with this Gated team. So basically, I've got my 4-4-2 there. And the guys that I'm going to look for to do the more direct play, taking a few more risks, they're probably the only ones that haven't got the take fewer risks play instruction on. You can see that I've got it on the fullbacks. One of my centre-backs doesn't have it on because he's actually got a decent passing and technique rate. So he will be playing a few longer balls, but all the others are on take fewer risks. We're talking about the two central midfielders. So basically, I've got about three players there that I'm allowing that expression the winger on this side, the central midfielder on attack, and obviously you've got a couple of forwards to do their thing as well. So I've hammered that this video, I've hammered it, I've hammered it, you're probably sick of me saying it, but lower league tactics, accentuate the positives where you've got them, and try and get rid of the negatives as best you can.